get rid of the chatter, had to slow down. Running 170 on the RPM. And I'm running my slowest speed, which is a uh, half inch speed on the old K and T here. Really turning slow. So for the roughing, it wasn't bad. I had some decent speeds. I was probably pulling, I don't know, I have to go back and look at the other video. But uh, we'll have some updates here. Just going down through here. Gonna open this up to two inch. Then put the counter bore in the back. This is actually the back end of the cylinder. Uh, so I think everything should work. If I, I'm gonna uh, fly cut. I'm gonna decide how I'm gonna do the back end. But this is the back end. This is the end that matters the most. Uh, parallel or perpendicular to the board. <coughs> Ideally what I would do is, I'm still thinking about doing it, taking it out to the final board, uh, putting a mandrel, putting it on a mandrel, and then doing it in the lathe. Uh, that way I could, do, I could face both ends, face the, di these, the outside diameters, get those where I want them. <coughs> oh, excuse me, so I'm, 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 that's where I'm at right now, debating that, so. Okay, update's coming. Okay, this is just a quick video set up for the cylinder. You'll see the sleeve. I think I talked about this before. Uh, I think I have a video on this like where I board for the, the cylinder and then we're injecting uh, we put in a sleeve, lock tighted that in. Um, okay, so uh -huh. oh, there we go. Okay, I guess we're okay. Does that look all right? Let's see if we can get that in there. I can't really see anything now. The boring head's on there. Uh, so what you got is a fly cutter as a boring head. I have it set to the right diameter. I experiment. What I did was I put this ring, which is a piece of the sleeve, on that register. And then put a screw on it at two locations across from each other to hold it in. Then I test board, as you can see, inside until I got the diameter at two inches, exactly what I wanted. Yeah, you see it? see a couple tries until I got it out right where I wanted it. Then I locked it in and this is a one-shot deal. It's bore in one shot. I'm gonna go down and just knock that out for two inches. It shouldn't be a problem. It's a light cut. Uh, you can see the shavings coming out the bottom. But the setup works real well. I'm going off an angle plate on this side using the holes put them out where the cylinder mounts in the frame. And of course, seat clamping across to the back side. The light cut, no pressure. Lock the table there and underneath it's locked. I'm running uh, 520 on the RPM and the lowest speed I can get, half inch per minute. So it's a slow process. But let me run over here to the other side. I'll show you what, what I end up with. This is one that's already completed. Now that we're away from the mill, a little bit quieter. But if you can see it in there, I, I threw some uh, WD in there just to. I mean, this, this, the, it's a mirror finish. Maybe it's too smooth. I'm not sure. But basically, what I did, this is the other end. Okay, here's what I got. So I'm registered off of here. Okay, because the caps have that register on them. And that fits on there, which now, if the bore is off of this, this bore is registered off of this, it's concentric. So then when this goes on here, of course, a little bit tight here. This, yeah, this is where the packing is, you can see that. That goes on there, that's going to pack on the, on the deal. So I mean, it should keep it 
I mean, it should be concentric. I'm really hoping that is. I mean, I don't see a reason why that wouldn't be. So I'm over here at the lathe right now, just getting ready to I set up a mandrel, a threaded mandrel. Uh, I know I have a three jaw chalk, but I threaded it in place, haven't touched it, screw the blank on up to a shoulder, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna cut these pistons. Five thousandths under, I believe is what is recommended, about five thousandths under the bore, and then cut in for the uh, two cast iron piston rings which I have. They were set up for two inches. So I should be good with that make two of those. I've got the piston rods done, so we'll be able to test fit those in a little bit. And we'll see. Sorry for the shaking, but uh, so this phone just, you know what it is. People try stabilization in, in uh, YouTube. Okay, I'm going to come back with some more. All right, a little quieter here now. Shut the mill off. Like I said, I was running 520 on the RPM. There, I was running... Uh, half inch per minute feed so here's what here's the deal at this point you'll see the uh the bars the way at the bottom run until i don't hear it basically which is easy because i got a quarter inch between where the sleeve ends and uh, it bottoms out and of course just have a block down there uh holding it up off the table so that the waste comes out the bottom so really what we're looking at here is let me get this back in focus here I hate handheld, but I don't know what else I can do right now. <clears throat> okay, so what I, I, I could back the tool out. But what I found is when I do that, I get a big scratch. This is just from past practice. You get a big scratch from the tool bit dragging. Um, I shouldn't say big scratch. It's a light scratch, but why have it? So what I'm going to do, uh, here again, I can't back the tool off. It's down inside. So I'm just going to loosen the part. I uh, mean, it's a one-shot deal. doesn't matter. Loosen the part, back the tool out, and then I'll show you what I got. All right, there's after the tool, you can see the parts loose. I backed it out. I moved the tool around to the front, so then I could just loosen it towards the front and make it out of there with no scratch. Trust me, there's no scratch. Um, question maybe, how did I center it over the hole? I left the tool bit in, and being that, um, the idea is if you can get this, at the area here here's where the tool bit cuts right so there's think of this imaginary ring around here when that cuts in the bore that's where you want it to have it you want to be zeroed over top and that falls through think about it, if it's slightly cocked one way or the other way well it would change the uh the bore slightly but it's very very minimal so but the but if you were to with this long extension if you were to put your dial indicator, here's what I have. Dial indicator, if I were to put that in up here and centered and created that imaginary ring here, right underneath, that would have been centered over the hole. That distance down here amplifies any tilt there might be in the head, front, back, right, or left, if it's not totally trans in right. Of course, you're dealing with a 1954 mail here with wear on all the ways. So your best bet to take a lot of that out is to come down to here. So I leave the bit in and you can see what I do. I have a hose clamp, put this around there and I bring the the indicator, I'm gonna go flat here, but I bring the indicator down to the same level as the tool bit. I swing that around that edge, this register here on there until I zero. Lock the table. And now when I plunge, I know I'm getting zero the whole way through the bore because that doesn't change. The table rises. Now, granted, if there was some, uh, <coughs> if the table's off, that's, that would be an issue. But the great thing is the bore that was originally placed in here and the angle plates are all identical. So the repeatability is good. So I should have a bore that when I check the other side should be very, very close if not right on the same as when I come out the other end. So that's what we're gonna, we're gonna check that here again, it's a steam engine. The part that really matters is this, the back, because this is where the, the back uh, cover fits on with the packing and so forth for the piston rod. 
The front, in theory, is just a plate that covers up to, to make it steam tight. I mean, that could be off. So it doesn't really matter on the other end. What matters is that that bore is parallel to the to this face on the back here because this the face here because this goes on the sit on the frame honestly the top the valving area really doesn't have to be flat to anything in theory because it's just the valve and that has enough play in this or in the valve linkage coming to it i mean it could be off and here again, that's another reason why after you get wear, you can face this down again to restore your engine, at least the valve face, and go back at it again with little or no change in anything, maybe a slight timing change. But that's where we're at right now. So this is one of the last steps uh, back to, uh, let me get back to doing pistons. Thanks for watching. And, and uh, just real quick for the boring bar itself, what a rigid setup. I mean, I take a piece of one inch cold rolled. There's the uh, set screws in it. Put the uh, fly cutter in it. Like I said, I have it. I measured it with my test piece to get me the bore I needed exactly two inches. And I have a nice collet in there. Of course, that goes the whole way up in. Uh, it's long. Of course, what's nice about that is it's very, It's I can reuse this. Uh, but boy, is it rigid and uh, works so much better than when I had played around using, let's see if I have another cutter here. It works so much better, honestly, than this setup. Um, this was what I had used early on when boring the cast iron cylinders and I just wasn't getting the finish I needed. I mean, it was nice, it was adjustable, but just wasn't getting what I needed. So I ended up with, with that as my setup. Actually, that's not what the final setup was. Let me show you that. <coughs> this is what I came up with as the final, as the final setup right here. Take a look at that. So basically machined a long adapter um, and here again, I, I tapered it down its inch, but I tapered down seven eighths because I couldn't find my inch call it, which then I did find for here, but it's seven eighths, still not that bad. Um, made that, threaded it, and put the head on. Boy, did this work nice. There's the bit, very little of it showing, but I mean, it worked, it was beautiful. I couldn't fit this in the sleeve because this thing is two inches. So instead of modifying this and whatever, I just went with, this solution which I knew I could do it one cut so it wasn't an issue so there you go probably too much that you needed to know there but just thought I'd let you know there okay thanks for watching bye